Today we're going to be talking about innovative ab work. Hi and welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hurt, and today we're going to be looking at creative ab work. The towel is one of the more underused props in a Pilates studio, but I highly recommend, especially for your mat classes, that you start to bring in a bath size towel or even a pool size towel to do some really fun, creative work on the mat. Now, as we know, you know, the ab curl is king when it comes to the Pilates repertoire. There's so many exercises in pre-Pilates and in regular Pilates that requires us to really understand how to flex the thoracic spine forward devoid of tension in the neck. Now, that is a very tall, tall order for people that have a really hard time organizing in space, people that have a lot of extra tension in their shoulder girdle and neck in a forward head position due to sitting at a desk, computers, or just lack of awareness in general. But I'm gonna use this nice bath towel to help really educate my body and what it's like to go into that forward flexion of the thoracic spine and just carry the head effortlessly. Now, we've talked about before on our site that there is a beautiful sling of connective tissue that inserts into the eyebrows, down the back of the head, back body, all the way down to the bottom of our feet. And what we need to do is really get that tissue to open up and elongate as we go into our ab curl. Now, why is that important? Many people go into that motion of ab curl from actually cinching the ribs together, and I'll show you what that looks like. So the crest of my ribs are here. It's nice and wide and open and relaxed. This is a really good starting point. But many people go into their ab curl by siphoning and as I'm sure you've heard in a Pilates studio somewhere out there, they're knitting their ribs together this way to come and find their ab curl. This is not optimal for your range of motion in your back body. That siphoning and, and cinching of the ribs together only creates tightness through this area of the rib cage, which is what we're supposed to be curling up with. So we want to try to bring ourselves away from that type of tension cueing, right? Bring ourselves into tension through movement. We don't want to do that. We want more options through movement, right? And that we can let the ribs feel like they're dripping down into the side and the front so that we can get all of the spaces in the back ribs to really open and expand almost like a hammock. Now, a lot of people cinch through the ribs here. They can't move this, so what do they do in their ab curl? All they do is they lift their head here. Now, this is really not great um, for the head and the neck, but it also enforces that forward head positioning that we see so much. So, in this nice experiment with our bath towel, we're gonna think of this as an extra layer of connective tissue in the body. And we're gonna see if we can get the back body to hang in this hammock that we're gonna create. So there's a few pieces of the pie that are really important to get so that you can get the proper work here. First things first, the arm position. So many people in ab curls their elbows are really wide and they come up and look up at the ceiling. That's really old exercise science, right? Because all that does is it tenses up the back of the neck when we're supposed to be opening up the back body. Also, when the elbows are too wide and away from one another, the shoulder blades 
close on the back body like elevator doors, which is counterproductive to trying to open the ribs to go forward. If my arms are wide, my shoulders are pulling back, it's actually trying to bring me back this way, creating stalemate through this part of the body. So as I grab onto my towel here, I want my elbows to be looking up at the ceiling. That's step one. Step two is I want to feel like I'm elongating and dragging the towel back behind me and a little bit up to the ceiling. The shoulder blades are trying to chase the elbows up. That already starts to drop my sternum down, creating that openness and that ferris wheel feeling of the body. Now with that tensioning through here, what I want to do is start to curl up. And it's the towel plus my arms that I can let my sternum go into, very hard ab work, and then back down. It looks like nothing, but it's very, very hard work to keep the length in the front body and move from the tissue in the back. So again, the head is completely cradled and carried by the arms and the abs. All of the motioning of the uh, ab curl is happening from this level. And because the arms are finding that contrast point, the serratus turns on. It starts to help in that motion, helping the oblique structure work in elongation rather than cinching the ribs down and together. Now, lots of different variations you can add on to this. You can go up into an ab curl, do your marching, do your leg slides, but really and truly, this is a beautiful learning experience of finding ease in the neck and shoulders, lots of opening in the back body by creating that sling space of a hammock with your bath towel, and better yet, it's summertime, you can do this by the pool or on the beach. So this question comes into us from Twitter asking about what are my our favorite props that we're kind of playing with this summer and what are some ideas of how to use it? Jennifer and I are pretty shameless when it comes to looking for props and usually it doesn't come from you know uh, movement magazines or um, any sort of those magazines that you get for PT or home health care. We go into places like Target and Walmart, we look in uh, we look at, at toy stores and we actually a lot of times go into pet stores too to find just the right props for what we're looking for or anything that really catches our eye and gets us to to start thinking outside the box and help uh, not only use props for release and movement, but actually to help explain uh, different phenomena in the body. So this one comes from Jen Gianni. She uh, went to Germany to the Fascial Summer School and found some really great little rollers that were wonderful for the body. They were about this big and very hard to get. So she went down to Target and found children's uh, cookie dough rollers. So these came from Target, which is really great, but you can find them everywhere. They're a little bit smaller than the uh, typical uh, dough roller. So this is really nice for the bottom of the feet, the legs, but for the summer, I've been doing this with a lot of my clients, this calf release because so many people are out, you know, hiking more, walking more. There's lots of hills in Asheville. So, well, you know, the body's getting a lot more use than maybe in, in the winter. So I like to take a yoga block and grab this uh, roller. I put weight into my hands and my foot and I do a nice little roll front and back here. It feels really nice. You can kind of move it down if you find an area of tension, you can do a little point and flex to get that tissue to start to move. You can also turn the leg out a bit and start to roll. For me, it's a very tight area. People start to feel where their muscles are tight, where they're not working as much. They start to get them to understand their alignment a little bit more. And it's also really nice because of the handles that you can start to roll up and down 
obviously not on the shin, but this kind of lateral front part of the lower leg that gets so incredibly congested. If you don't get the, the tibia and the fibula to not only move this way, but also this way on one another, the mechanics of the ankle don't work for the talus, and that goes right up into hip tension. So this is, again, a really nice thing to do for your walkers, your runners, your hikers, your bikers, and then also people just getting back into movement. The summer can be a really kind of uh, inspiring time. People wanna get in shape, and a lot of times, getting that pure movement on all the pieces of equipment takes a little bit of release work from um, an unconventional friend from the kitchen. That's it for today, and if you have any questions that you want to see answered on an upcoming episode, you can list it below on Facebook, Twitter, or a forum. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time, and never stop learning. <gasps> what am I saying?